You were born with individual strengths and a unique purpose. Don't let fears, false beliefs, or life's happenings diminish your influence. It's time to live and lead for impact. Host Kirsten Ross, expert of transformation, will help you defeat the drama and overcome the trauma that can stop you in your tracks. You'll gain focus, find confidence, and take bold action. Unleash passionate, purposeful you. Let's go. Welcome to Live and Lead for Impact. I'm Kirsten Rossvogel, your host, and this is episode 308. So bonus today, I have two great guests today, Drs. Michael and Barbara Grossman. For over 25 years, Drs. Michael and Barbara Grossman have taught thousands of couples practical skills to create a fulfilling romantic partnership. They have TV appearances on CBS, NBC, Fox, and CW. Tune into this powerful interview to discover the secrets to having a fulfilling long-term romantic partnership with a genuine love that lasts forever through all the phases of life. And I can't wait to hear some strategies. I know so many people struggle with this. So welcome, Dr. Michael and Dr. Barbara. It's great to be with you. Nice to be here. Yeah. So we just got to talk a little bit before we actually officially started. And so describe to me a little bit. I know you guys, you know, you work together and it sounds like you have some endeavors that, that, that you also do separately. So if one of you wants to start, tell me a little bit about the work and the impact that you're making in the world. Well, I'm an anti-aging longevity doctor. I've been doing this since 1973, 74. And I keep people young and healthy, and I love doing that to be able to keep romance alive over a lifetime. <clears throat> takes a variety of interventions, and one of them is keeping youthful. And so that's what I do for people on a physical, hormonal, nutritional level. I keep people feeling youthful so that you can maintain that passion that you need to have to have a romantic relationship work over a lifetime. And then Barbara and I do things where we work together. <clears throat> Barbara does marriage counseling as a profession, and she sees her people every week, some 40 people a week or something like that. And, and then we come together and we offer people practical skills to make your relationship work over a lifetime. And there are many skills that you need to have a relationship work. And you're not born knowing these skills. So we have these courses and classes to teach people how to create these skills. And the great value of a relationship, having romantic relationships work over a lifetime, is that it makes you live longer. I'm a longevity doctor. The most important factor in longevity after the age of 50 is the quality of your personal relationships. So, oh, and I hear you saying plural. So it's not just about, so I think you, maybe you're talking about community. It sounds like too. So not even just your key significant other relationship, but, but all relationships. Interesting question for men. The most important relationship is your romantic relationship because men are not as good as women in having intimate relationships with others. Mm -hmm. Women have a lot more ability to do that. So for women, it is what you say, it's, 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 it's all of your intimate relationships. For men, all of your intimate relationship usually means your wife. <laughs> Great. Dr. Barbara, did you want to add anything to, to what he just said? Well, you know, I work with lots of people who have families who are married and who have, are challenged to keep it all together along with work. You know, we're a, we're a culture that values individuality and that's delicious. I understand from our conversation, our brief conversation that you, you know, you like, like supporting people with their purpose and how to express it in the world, how to make a difference. And it's, it's complicated to have, to be very individualized and, and stay connected in a partnership. And the balance of that is really, you know, takes wisdom to end and also takes skills. And since Michael and I have been on that journey over 50 years, we understand that the inevitable challenges that come for couples who have a very defined self, but also want love and romance and family in their life. 
Well, and I think anytime you add on the additional stress of either working together or having entrepreneurs just in the family or like one entrepreneur and one person who has kind of a more of a traditional job, like punch in and punch out kind of a thing. I think all of those dynamics can really add extra layers of complexity too. Yes. And all of those are variations. So they are different situations that require different solutions. Yeah. So Dr. Michael, I'm curious. I just want to, I want to hear a little bit more about your um, longevity work and full disclosure. I have to say, so my husband and I have been married for 10 and a half years. We've been together for, I don't know, 13, 14 years, but he is 16 years younger than me. Oh, really? Wow. <laughs> so I am very interested You're motivated. In, in, in staying healthy, staying young. So tell me some, I mean, we talk, we can talk meditation. We were talking a little bit about that, but what else, what are some of the other strategies that you share with people? Well, for women, women go through menopause. It's pretty dramatic. Somewhere between the ages of on average, 45 to 55 would be the average. Mm -hmm. Women will stop making estrogen, progesterone, testosterone over a period of six months to a year. It gradually goes away. And then you can get a lot of symptoms. You know, your menstrual cycle starts getting irregular. You get hot flashes. You're not sleeping well. Your moods are not even. Your libido goes down. Your muscle stamina and endurance goes away. Goes and, away. Don't yeah, tell me it goes away. <laughs> and that happens over, over that six months to a year where you're losing your hormones. And so if you replace hormones naturally, meaning bioidentical, meaning the same kind of hormone that you had when you were 30, not synthetic hormones. You live longer and healthier than if you do nothing. If you take the synthetics, you don't live longer, you live shorter. So I always use the natural hormones and it's really traumatic. And I do that here in my office. And now with the new rules and regulations, I can do it online and give people prescriptions online. And it makes a huge difference in maintaining youthfulness. So that's an easy fix. I do that. That's like <laughs> everyday easy stuff. You can talk about the, you know, how you can improve your brain function and, and all the ways in which you can stay beautiful, no matter how old you are. Well, that's another. Oh, that all sounds really exciting to learn about too. <laughs> <laughs> we have fun keeping women and men looking young and also feeling young. But it's, it's a fun thing. And it's nice to look young, but. And you need energy to have a great romantic relationship. Right, right. Okay. And then, so tell me about some of the workshops that you do or the times that you spend together with couples. What are some of the strategies that you share and the outcomes that you're helping them achieve? Well, we, we, we help couples understand the dilemma we're in as men and women together and what we each need from each other. It's not exactly the same. And we teach skills on how to deliver what, what, what makes a woman, what makes a man feel happy and valued in the relationship. Every, you know, everyone needs respect and appreciation and attention. There's slightly different degrees of that for each, but we teach partners how to you know, feed the relationship. We also teach couples how to talk to each other because there's so many important things that come up over time that needs to be talked about. You know, over time, you, you unpack some of the experiences and values and injuries that you've had over your lifetime. And instead of just, you know, repeating a reaction to certain experiences, it's important that you share what's underneath those reactions so that you can give each other the, the understanding and the love you each need. And it takes learning how to talk to each other. And, you know, most of us, we wait a little bit too long. We're reactive. It starts, you know, arguments that doesn't work. And so we, we take it apart and we teach, we teach our couples how to talk and we teach couples how to reinforce and create love. It's, it takes intention. It doesn't happen honestly. It has to be, it's, it's not an unconscious thing. It has to be very conscious. And then there's the matter of a time in life where couples parent, there is, there is a strategy to parenting together. That's important. And if, you know, most of us just repeat what our parents have done and there's a, there is knowledge about how to parent together so that we, we parent and we activate the values that are important in a behavioral fashion that's respectful to our children and it keeps our partnership connected. Well, and that's a time when finding 
um, opportunity to spend as spouses to continue to maintain a healthy relationship. So we're empty nesters now in a different phase of life, but during those parenting years, it is a lot. You have to be, I believe, I mean, you're the expert, but way more intentional about carving out little bits and pieces of time at a minimum, right. To, to work on your, your partnership, which is so important. Absolutely. And it, you know, to give, have your children have a reasonable bedtime is so important. A lot of parents don't know how to do that. And, you know, that protects the children getting enough sleep and preparing for school the next day. And it gives parents time to be adults together. Very important. So tell me what life experiences brought you to, to, to doing the work together and doing the work that you're doing. What inspired you to do this? The, the inspiration came from the, the natural change that occurs in a romantic relationship. <clears throat> we got married, we were 20 and 21. And after 10 years of doing whatever I said, how I wanted it done, which was a wonderful marriage for me. <laughs> and Barbara was back in graduate school. And then she started having her own opinion about things, how things should be done. And th th we had to create a whole different kind of marriage then. And a whole different dynamic in the communication, right? So Absolutely. Barbara was very accommodating initially and listening. And then you right. had to, so everybody had to negotiate suddenly. <laughs> That's not like a surprise. That's <laughs> nature in our, in our, our, our book, The Marriage Map, The Road to Transform Your Marriage from a Deal to Adventure. We describe that whole process. It's, a, it's inevitable that who you are when you're 20 is so different than who you are when you're 30 something. Mm -hmm. and, and you have to have the skills in your relationship to deal with these changes. And so we, we went to many different mentors and took many courses and classes, and we learned the skills that we teach now. We learned how to communicate in a different way, how to understand that Barbara's a different person who she used to be and what we used to do doesn't work anymore. And we struggled through that process. And now what we teach is making that process so much easier because we give you the specific skills that you need. And it's a very practical process. And that's been our motivation to create loving romantic partnerships which support the children and the parents. And it brings the experience of God's love into your life. So for me, I was always involved with meditation. And, and, and for me, that was the, the, the most important thing in my life was my relationship with God. And to begin to allow Barbara to be my process by which I experience God's love. So it changes the whole way I interacted in the world. Instead of her being an annoyance and in the way of my process, she became the path to doing that. And that for me was this whole transformation. And so I was willing to do all kinds of things that I would otherwise never do. And Barbara wanted me to take courses and classes in all these personal growth things that were really like uh, difficult <laughs> kind of things to do. I, I would never have done them. And that's the value of romantic relationship. It pushes you to grow. You can either have a guru or you can have a marriage. If you have a guru, they're going to push you in all kinds of ways that are unpleasant to make you grow. In a marriage, your partner is going to push you in all kinds of ways that don't feel good. But when you do it, it forces you to grow and develop. And that's what we teach people. And what inspired you to want to take what you had learned for your own marriage and share it with others? Tell me a little bit about that that time and how you reached that well, I'm conclusion. happy to answer that question, but I want to reflect and generalize what Michael's saying. But, you know, Michael started out while I had a number of degrees, I had a, you know, a BA and a master's and I was a PhD candidate. I wasn't a slouch, but I wasn't engaged in the world like Michael was. He was an entrepreneur working hard, making a business. And as a consequence, he was very much in his head. And when I woke up to what was missing in my life, I wanted Michael to be more in his heart, which is a completely different language. And so we, we were challenged to figure out how to integrate our personalities. And I had to learn to be more in my head and balance my emotions. And Michael needed to learn to be more in his heart as well as his head. And that, that created partnership. And what motivates me to take this to the community, very simply, is I grew up for the first eight years of my life without a dad. I saw my mom. She, you know, 
her first marriage was a, a mistake for her. She eventually remarried and had a great marriage. And I, so I experienced life without a dad and I experienced life with a dad. And I want American children to have moms and dads, whether they're living together or living apart. I want both parents being involved. It makes such a difference in your development as a person. Dads are so important in life. And, you know, there's a lot of moms out there. They go through the legal process and they, they, you know, they, they disrespect the dad's influence. And I want, you know, the, the easiest way to make that happen is to keep partners together, raising their children under the same roof. That was, that's my first choice. And it means learning things. And, you know, you can learn things with the partner you have, or you can learn things with the next partner, but why not learn things with the partner you, you have now? Because a lot of, a lot of the obstacles that part that I see in my office are, are a lack of development. If you learn and stretch yourself and learn skills that move you through the next developmental stage, you can have the partnership you desire. And that's what we're, that's what we're about teaching that. That's great. What about when there are circumstances where both partners aren't interested in, you know, having working towards a healthy relationship transforming or where there's some kind of an, of abuse? Well, some, some marriages don't work for sure. And you, my, my role often is to inspire the partners to make decisions for themselves that are smart, but to really understand what their children need. And in spite of their own, you know, opinions to work together, to give their children, you know, the best of each of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good. So I always like to take just a quick minute to see if there is a way that I can share some strategies that would be helpful to you, because if there's some kind of challenge that you're working through right now, as business owners, other people who are listening are likely going through something similar. And so is there a challenge that to your making your bigger, bolder impact that you would like to share right now that we can, we can work through? So my Acumen is around leadership, building teams, communication, which I'm, you probably don't have any challenges with, but, but is there a challenge right now in your business? Well, the basic challenge we have is that we had written one book, Marriage Map, two years ago. We have a new book, The Ageless Love, Prescription for Mind, Body, and Spirit, that's coming out next month. We have this other book, Deep and Effortless Meditation, that will be coming out in the next month. We have video courses online, five video courses helping people, helping couples deal with relationship issues related to children, money, sex, arguing. Not feeling important. Not feeling important. And we have our, our big classes that we have. And we have a team of people that we're just starting now to look how we're going to market this stuff. And that's the issue. How do you market this and how do we get out and do the things? And we love doing all this stuff. It's just a delight, but that it's a big challenge to, to figure that out. And it's, uh, it's complicated. So in terms of the challenge in marketing, is it the right people? Is it what to do? Is it having the time to do the things, which if you like got specific about I think, what? I think what to do is like a big challenge. You have, you have people who say for $10,000 will analyze what you should do and what other people have done to be successful. Well, that's a possibility. And what to do, you know, we have so many different options and ultimately we're going to see what catches, what works. So, you know, social media, marketing, advertising on Google and whatever other social media talking to churches, synagogues, and other, other groups to offer our, our programs. So, you know, that's the question. Yeah. Dr. Barber, did you have anything to add? No, it's not clear to me defining our audience. I think, you know, for the most part, our audience, are, this is a very strenuous economic time for people. We've come, we've just come out of, of, uh, you know, a, 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 a pre, you know, suppressed, social environment of COVID. And uh, I think people are not as much into their, I mean, they're, they have their private relationship pain and I hear about it in my practice, but I, I think people are concerned about finances. They're, they're concerned about their children's schools. I think our audience is for sure people who are more conservative. 
but we're really defining our audience. It should be a universal issue for partners. I don't think, you know, development challenges all of us, but I'm not, I'm not sure how to, you know, define that audience. Yeah. So full disclosure, I'm not, if we're talking specifically marketing, I mean, I've been a business owner for many years, but I'm not a marketing pro, but what I would say is, and can share around this is finding the right people to surround yourself that you can trust to make those key decisions. And it is hard because I know when you're going out looking for people to do all the different things, social media, digital marketing, funnel building, you know, who do you listen to? Because everyone has different opinions. And sometimes it starts to feel like, what is it? They're the nail saw, the solutions look like a hammer or whatever <laughs> that, solu- that, that saying is, you know, so if they're the digital marketing person, they're going to talk about the importance of digital marketing and building funnels, et cetera. And so I think one in defining your, I heard you, Dr. Barbara, talk about in defining your audience that you are potentially looking for a more conservative audience, but depending on the the bent of it, yeah, I don't know. Those might be depending on, you know, generically, yes, I think everyone is struggling with the same kinds of things, but if your solutions would speak to more of a conservative audience, then I would include that for sure. You know, who, who's going to resonate, et cetera, in your, you know, when they talk about your avatar, or your ideal client. So our solutions are universal. They're, well, that's what I would think. I, I I heard you say something about conservative. I said conservative only because conservative people don't have a divorce and replace philosophy so effortlessly as, you know, as other people. Mm, I see. So to me, what I hear in that is because I have a belief that lots of people don't want to just divorce and replace, but do absolutely want to stick it out. But so we don't necessarily, and I know a lot of conservatives, honestly, who have gotten divorced and uh, aren't really. So I think though, it's more than the conservative, like using that label in my mind, you are looking for the people that want to put the work in versus discard what they have. So it's not conservative. You know, we're not putting labels that might not, because again, if I, if we look at the stats, I know conservatives that are adulterers and, you know, or have heard of, and we all know that. So, um, so I don't think that, I don't think that label is helpful really, but Mm -hmm. on an individual level, yeah, removing that it's just, they want to put in the work they care about. And I will say that you know, both partners, we don't have to have both partners, like 100% on board, like, like even, you know, your husband wasn't really like loving the idea of putting in the work, but was willing. But so definitely, I'm sure ideal, um, you want both partners, at least willing and participating. And then again, wanting to do the work, understanding the importance, you don't want to have to already teach the importance of Obviously, the the optimal is having a unified family and parents together, raising their children, et cetera. So um, there's probably some core values around there that you would include in your um, in your ideal client. And then in terms of, you know, if your teaching is faith based, that might and I don't know if it is. It isn't. Okay. so but sometimes just the language and all of those. So, for instance, like in my coaching I, I sometimes say that I'm better suited for in general, like heart centered, passionate entrepreneurs versus and in, in nonprofits, et cetera. Cause I love working with people who are excited to, you know, make an impact in the world and all that. And I, my coaching style is more suited towards the personality types, like not so much for like CPAs and, and engineers and things like that. Cause they like a lot of structure. And so also just thinking about in terms of how your ideal client takes in information and how they, you know, how they could best, what kind of person would best learn from how you provide the information and who you guys are, you know, I would, I would include those things in, in your target audience. And then thinking about, you know, and also do you want, do you want to focus in any way like on business owners or family business people or, or anything? Cause you know how they always say in marketing, if you try to shout to everybody, nobody hears. So it's being realistic about who's going to be a good fit. Like, so Dr. Barbara, I know you talked about, you know, them feeling overwhelmed and in life balance. So does it make sense to passively target business owners? I mean, everyone can have life balance issues, but so just thinking about, you know, are there other variables that would help you narrow down if you are going to do like Facebook ads or Google ads, things like that, you know, cause on Facebook, you can get quite specific in your targeting, you know, so thinking about, 
you know, group types of groups that they would be in, you know, interests that they would have, job titles that they might have, regions where they would live, et cetera. So getting getting really specific with some of those kinds of things to help you so that your dollars are spent well. Good thought. Yeah. <laughs> and I would say, and then decide from your personality for how, how you want to market yourself. So you're doing podcast interviews. So that's, you know, a good way to get the word out. And it's aligned with, you know, perhaps who, who you are. You've been on TV. So that's aligned with who you are. So even thinking in terms of, it's funny earlier today, I was interviewing a salesperson, like their, their business is helping people with sales and marketing. And I was talking about how, cause he helps people define their messaging. And I asked like, does he help with in person, like on the stage? Cause he's a big speaker, like on the stage personality stuff and messaging, or, you know, what about digital? So in the written, so like, do you love writing to get your message out. So where blogging would be good versus doing, you know, we can do lives now on even LinkedIn, you know, is your target audience possibly on LinkedIn? And so you want to get a rotation into um, doing some things on LinkedIn as well. So that, that your personality comes out and who you are. It's not just words on a page, but they get to, to meet and and know and trust you. So, and do you have a Facebook group or anything like that already? Not yet. Okay. And I will say Facebook's a little bit harder now to get just organic growth and all of that. You pretty much have to spend ad dollars kind of to get people into a Facebook group. But the LinkedIn video is, it's interesting right now because it's fairly new. And so if you have, um, not everyone has access to do that, but, but it's uh, the in LinkedIn video is doing very well. It's getting lots of, you can get lots of views just organically right now. So, cause it's a fairly new thing. So. And using something like StreamYard, you can actually go live in multiple places all at once, which is really awesome. And you can either pre-record or to do like a live that's actually pre-recorded. It allows you to do it ahead of time and then just schedule it at a specific time. Or you can literally be live and interacting with people. And so there's a free version and then a a couple of levels of paid in the mid range, which is not much. I know you can do three locations at once, which is pretty cool. So there's a couple of ideas. <laughs> we, we also have a, we're, we're competitive ballroom dancers. We have a dance show oh. that we incorporate the stages of, of development that are relevant to b- developing your relationship. And uh, we, we mix the, the dancing to tell the story, our own story, and to illuminate what are predictable stages and how they impact a relationship. And it's an entertaining show. Wow. Well, that sounds really interesting. <laughs> what yeah. a fun way to illustrate because boy, in dancing, you really have to work with your partner. Well, wow. it's, it's a perfect metaphor for partnership. Yeah. Oh, that's great. That's great. Well, that's any other questions around that? No, we just have to look for venues. Pla- places and venues where we can do this, whether it be churches or synagogues or businesses, we have to yeah. find who would be so interested. We, we haven't really, we're just in the process of doing that now. Yeah. And then in terms of if you are going to outsource some of these activities, just super quickly, a couple of little strategies around that is one, first create the list of the tasks that need to be done. And, and a quick place to look for that is where do you each have things that you would like to delegate? Because it's not in your core you know, strengths, gifts, things that you love to do. Let's get other people to do the things that they're really great at. And then, so create the list of what comes off your plate and goes elsewhere. And then the second thing is look at that tasks that are not being done at all, but it would really benefit the business by having them done, put those on a list. And then the second thing is, is look at that list and think about would these tasks likely live well within one person, or is it possibly a couple of different personality types? And maybe you need to, you know, break it up and look for a few different people. Cause obviously if some of it is billing and that's a very detail oriented thing, and the other is very creative, that's likely not one person. It's going to be pretty hard to find someone who's great at, at both of those things. So that's just a super quick way to start determining who you need in that next person to bring onto the team, look at the skills first. And then of course, then you'll create a description of what you need them to do and how much time you anticipate. And then when you are talking to people, always use behavioral-based interviewing because that is what gets you to who they are, what you, how they've behaved in the past. 
So you can anticipate how they'll behave in the future when they're working for you. So you ask them to actually run through scenarios where they tell you how they've reacted or behaved in certain circumstances that would be similar to what they're doing for you. Okay. We're happy to offer you a relationship with us that if you have the opportunity to offer joint venture. to join venture with us and offer our courses to people who you think might benefit from them, that would be a great pleasure for us. Oh, wow. Well, you're talking to me or the listeners? I'm talking to you. Oh, okay. Well, we'll have to talk about that offline. Well, thank you. I'll, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll talk further about that. <laughs> that sounds great. We actually so, have, a, we have a great team. I'm proud to say we have, oh, a, good. We have a remarkable talent. And we've just spent a lot of time writing two books this year. So it's time to put our team to work in, you know, out outwardly focused. And I appreciate your ideas. Yeah, you're welcome. So share again, I know you've mentioned briefly the the titles of the book. So share those again, and then give your web address so that people can find you. And again, it'll be on the show notes for today's episode. So our new book is called Ageless Love, a prescription for mind, body, and spirit. And our other book is deep and secrets to deep and effortless meditation. And, and those are our two new books. And our, our website is fallingalloveforever.com, where you can get information about our courses, classes. And that would be, those would be the sites you can go to. Right. Well, and it's so important. Yeah. Those, that key partnership, you know, speaking as someone who I'm so grateful for the relationship that my husband and I have together and the, you know, in our communication and the ease at with, at which communication happens and resolution and all those kinds of things. And, you know, he can be my cheerleader and I can be his, and it does make life much more enjoyable and you can make more, more of an impact in the world as well. Absolutely. And it helps you live longer. That's right. That's right. And that's key as well. Cause I do want to live a really long time. <laughs> Well, so as we close out, what words of wisdom would you have for others who are working to make their own impact in the world? Just know if you feel trapped, if you feel disappointed, if you don't feel respected or appreciated the way you want, if there's, if you sense there's more love and that's possible in life, you don't want to, you know, accept those limitations. You want, you want to know that there is a way to grow your relationship and have it be magnificent and fulfill your deepest desires and releasing the love and join your life will release your passion for creativity and self-expression. Ooh, I love that. Yes. Yes. And let that, that important relation be something that builds you up, gives you more energy, helps you feel more vibrant and yes. And, and make that impact in the world. Dr. Michael, anything else to add? Just that you need skills to make all those things happen that Dr. Barb referred to. Most people don't get all that skills from watching their parents, you need to learn them for yourself. And these skills are simple, easy, and but it does take a little time and, and, and focus. And, and, and I encourage your listeners to make that effort because it is the basis for both longevity, fulfillment, happiness, and energy for creativity. Mm, That's awesome. You know, I I just thought of a story and I'm such a storyteller. So I know we were about to close off, but I do feel like I just feel inspired to share this story um, because it was such an illustration of, I believe the difference in the experience of being in a healthy partnership. So I was in an abusive marriage and did need to leave because there was, I mean, I did all the things. I wasn't throwing it away. I wanted to make it work. I stayed much longer until really all my two boys and I were both physically sick from all the stress and everything that we were going through. But anyway, so years later, I met my now husband. And again, we've been together, you know, married 10 and a half, over 10 and a half years and together about 13. You know, so he's been thankfully in my boys' lives since they were very young. But anyway, when my second book came out, I remember. So in my previous relationship, I had to make myself very small, actually any big event that was happening, I would, he would usually ruin it in some way, create some kind of drama, berate me, you know, something would happen. I won't go into details, but anyway, something would happen that I definitely was not my best self by the time I got to the big event, you know, whether it was speaking or whatever, flash forward to my second book launch, we're having this big party and in preparation, my husband and I went out my 
wonderful husband, went out looking for a dress that I was going to wear. And he pointed at this beautiful, long, red, with a train dress. And my first thought was, I just laughed. And I said, oh my gosh, I would never wear. And he's like, no, this is, you know, we are celebrating you and this great achievement and you need this dress. I also never bought anything that wasn't on sale and it was full price. I mean, there was just a million things where I never would have glanced at this dress, but I have a picture of me in that dress with my husband next to me and my two beautiful boys. And I rocked that dress that night. And while I am an intelligent woman who has a lot to bring to this world, having that my husband in this beautiful relationship and his cheerleading and I'm tearing up now, but anyway, his encouragement to it's okay to be bold and be the center of attention and celebrate this huge achievement. And I am right there proud of you by your side. Nice. It is so lovely. And I want that for everybody. So I love that you help couples achieve that. I am inspired by your story and that's what we want for relationships. And when the relationship are working, that's what it does. And to get to that place takes a lot of skills and a lot of work so that that becomes a reality. And it's what everyone deserves and that I hope everyone can achieve. So thank you for the important work that you do in helping couples because ideally, yes, you stay together and you make that that happen together so that both of you, each of you can be better in this world. Excellent. Well, that's lovely. Lovely to be here with you. Yes. Well, thank you so much for joining me. It's been great. And thank you again for the work that you do. And, you know, if you are in need in your relationship, your key relationship, please reach out to doctors, Michael and Barbara Grossman. So you'll find their link on today's show notes. Go to defeatthedrama.com, click on the podcast tab and go to episode 308. And again, their website is fallinginloveforever.com, which who doesn't want to do that? So thank you. And you'll find all the information about their previous books, their new books. And if you are struggling with building your high performing team, making your bigger, bolder impact, leadership, communication, all those kinds of things, reach out to me. Go to myimpactacademy.com forward slash book call, and you can grab a spot on my calendar. I would love to chat with you. Let me see how I can help you. All right. Thank you again, doctors and everyone get out there, make it a great day and make your bigger, bolder impact and rock out those relationships. Do what you got to do. Reach out to them. Thanks. Thank you too. 